Hi, it's Christy with Guy Post to Wellness, and here I am sitting on my blanket again, taking a nice break, and I, I've got my book, Mindless Eating, here. See, you can see I'm still still reading on it, but I wanted to share with you uh, chapter four, talking about some of the hidden persuaders, and this one was kind of fun because he uses a couple of uh, secretary tests that I can attribute working in an office space definitely apply uh, to myself as well. And we've all heard this expression for a variety of things, whether it's food or people or whatever, that out of sight is out of mind. And I can, I can definitely attest to that. So he's talking about the hidden candy dish test. So they gave candy dishes to secretaries and some of the secretaries had the candy dish clear candy dish sitting right on um, on their desk. Others had a candy dish that was covered. Others had a candy dish that was in a drawer. Um, so they tested and showed that the clearly visible open clear container candy dish they, they ate more of. If they couldn't see the candy in the dish but it was still close by, they ate a few. And then if it was actually completely hidden in a drawer where they didn't even see that it was a candy dish, they ate even less. So that one definitely makes sense. Um, he also talked about if you know there's food around and you think about it, that's going to make you want it even more. He used the example of donuts in the break room. So you have two people sitting in cubicles, which I work in, and one of them knows that there are donuts in the break room, the other one doesn't. And so the guy that knows that there are donuts in the break room keeps thinking about the donuts and the donuts and he really wants a donut. So when he finally does go on break, he has to have a donut. Whereas the other guy didn't know there were any donuts in the break room and he walks in and he goes, eh, oh, okay, nah, I'm not interested in a donut. Because he hadn't been thinking about it and he hadn't psyched himself up. So I think that's pretty interesting and I can see that in uh, my daily work life as well. And then he has a section of the chapter called, Would You Walk a Mile for a Caramel? Well, I probably would. <laughs> I love caramel. That's definitely one of my uh, sweet indulgences. I probably wouldn't walk a mile for one, but yeah, I can, I can definitely see the point. And he did another experiment here with the location of the candy dish. So you put a candy dish on the secretary's desk. You put a candy dish um, in a drawer. You put a candy dish uh, like six feet away across the room or something like that and because people literally had to get up and walk even just six feet across the room they were far less inclined to get uh, a piece of candy so that can really explain uh, you know a lot about just the eating out of boredom just the fact that it's there so I'm going to eat it kind of thing that really gets us with that mindless eating type of thing that we do and especially in an office space where you may be bored or doing something that's very repetitious so you're you're going to look for that little sweet uh, treat. The other thing that he talked about here is how bulk buying contributes to our overeating and how a lot of times especially when it comes to foods it may not really be economically beneficial and I can think about this I was thinking about my my dad he um, and my mom used to go to to Sam's Club but my dad loved like peanut butter and cheese filled little pretzel nuggets just a little nuggets and they came in these great big clear of course plastic containers and it was really funny because he talks about in this uh, scenario that people will, because they bought it in bulk and they have a large amount of it and it's in a large container, that they will eat more of it uh, during the first week or so because it's right there. And then like we talked about in a previous chapter, they'll, they'll get tired of it, a little bit fatigued of eating the, the we'll say peanut butter filled pretzels. Uh, so they'll want to crave a little bit of variety. So after about the first week, then they'll stop eating it. So they ate a whole bunch the first week. Then after the after that period, they won't eat much. And then guess what happens? Then it goes stale, and then they end up throwing it away. So there was no benefit to buying this large container of it. So I thought that was really interesting too, thinking about buying anything in in bulk of that nature. So. This chapter was a little bit shorter, which is great because I mean it's a little bit shorter video for you guys too. Um, so when we think about the re-engineering strategies for this, they are fairly simple. Um, he, he titles it, Make Overeating a Hassle, Not a Habit. So um, 
that makes that makes a lot of sense and he talks about some things like making seconds harder to get by if you're eating at, at a table a family dinner or something like that then you put the seconds in the kitchen um, or you keep like the healthier things like maybe some some salads or the vegetables on the table so if they somebody wants a second they'll just reach over and grab that bowl versus having to get the less healthy options from either a sideboard across the room or in the kitchen so believe it or not even just that will make us uh, second guess or, or think about whether or not we really need the seconds he also talks about even things like treats that you have in the house is to put them on the top shelf put them in a basement put them in a freezer or put them somewhere where it's less convenient again out of sight out of mind and that can be the opposite as well for healthier things so keep fruit out or keep fruit in the front of the refrigerator in clear containers and then the more fattening things like let's say cheesecake or something like that in the refrigerator put that in something that conceals it whether it's uh, opaque and you can't see what's in it some type of container or cover it with aluminum foil something like that so that your mind um, isn't hit with that food when you open up the refrigerator door instead you see the salad or the veggies or something like that some carrot sticks or something that you can nosh on instead that'll be a little bit easier um, the last one I can see the benefit of um, snacking at the table and on a clean plate that that may work for some people um, but you know just just a suggestion but I think it's really important to understand that we do look for foods and if, if it's right there in front of us it's very convenient we just reach over and grab it then we're definitely going to uh, want it and be more inclined to indulge so I thought this was a great one uh, some of them seem fairly simple types of changes that we could make in our personal lives um, even in an office space or something like that so make sure you don't have that candy dish near you make sure you can't see the candy in the candy dish and try to hide those snacks and things uh, in a hard to reach place so that they're not right there in front of your face so uh, we are well on our way next chapter five uh, coming soon be well